Well, you know, I, again, you know, we, we've had uh, several references to the fact that the borough elections are coming up on Tuesday. I cannot emphasize enough that you must research the candidates, you must research the issues, do not just show up on Election Day and expect to be able to make a good choice. Because, uh, you know what, I, the last time, I am never going to encourage people to go out and vote if they don't know the issues ever again. The last time I did that, uh, I had a friend of mine, a good close friend, who went to the polls and voted for Luke Hopkins because he thought he was the conservative candidate because he heard an ad that said that Luke Hopkins was conservative. <laughs> uh. Not even gonna. So I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to tell people get out and vote. I'm going to say get informed, and then go and vote if you feel that you understand what where the candidates are coming from. Know what you're getting, because if you if you listen to the ads, how many of the ads actually tell you what the candidates believe, or how many of them are saying you should vote for me because I'm I've been in the borough for so many years and I, I it's my turn. James Madison, I think this whole this whole argument is squeezed down to property rights. Property rights are our most sacred rights that we have as Americans. Uh, and if you look back, in the, the founders considered property not just, um, you know, we think of property, well, do you own land? Do you own a house? They viewed property as your thoughts were your property, your money was your property, your land was your property. Anything that was yours was property. And your wood stoves, your coal burners are your property. This is about property rights. And James Madison, I would very much encourage people to read James Madison. The guy was brilliant. He is one of the reasons why we are here. I really want to encourage people to go back to the people that started this nation. He said... There is not a just government, nor is property secure under it, for the property, please listen. There is not a just government, nor is property secure under it, where the property which a man has in his personal safety and personal liberty is violated by arbitrary seizures of one class of citizens for the service of the rest. A magistrate issuing his war warrants to press gang would be in his proper functions in Turkey or Indostan. So what he's saying is exactly what Prop 2 is proposing to do. That has no place here. It would work in Indostan or Turkey, but there is no place in proper government, in a just government, for something like Prop 2 to be passed. There is no place for it. James Madison, one of the founders, one of the presidents, he was the governor of Virginia. The man was a patriot. The man wrote a bunch of the uh, Federalist Papers. This proposition is unjust, plain and simple. There is no way to make it just. It is against property rights. It is violating by arbitrary seizures of one class of citizens for the service of the rest. That is wrong. And if you look, we need to vote it down and get rid of it. If you look at the broader all. issue, though, Josh, it is not just this one specific proposition. It is the principle behind it, and it is the agenda that is driving the people that brought this proposition forward. Because if you look at the people who are on the borough assembly now, and you look at the people who are the people who are running for borough assembly, it's very obvious who is going to vote for these kinds of programs again in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some of the people running right now they, voted uh, for oh, the wood stove ban. Exactly. Now they say, I mean, one in particular here, one of your opponents, Josh, has said, well, I, I'm against Prop 2, but he voted for the ban on wood stoves originally. Last year. Last I year. I going to bring that up. But. Oh, I'm going to bring it up for you because I think it's important that people understand. In terms of the, the three people running for your seat, Josh, you are the only one who has been consistent against interference of the person's right to burn wood. Aaron, likewise, on the six people running for your seat, the one that you're running for, you are the only one who has come out and said, look, this is this is wrong across the board, no way, no no, uh, no I'm not the only one, Les McFarlane. Yeah, Les is pretty straight up guy. Okay? Has he been 100% against uh, I think Prop he's been two? down the borough quite a bit and... Uh, Speaking out against those type of things, actually. All right. I don't want to be unfair by any means. I understand that. And then, of course, on the, the, the Duke's seat, of course, uh, what, what's our choice between Duke's and a guy who's actually from the Environmental Center who helped to author? No, that was Mr. Davies, I believe. Okay. No, I thought Van Lawrence is Van? also he's oh, okay. also associated with the Northern Environmental I'm, Center. 
I haven't studied a whole lot of Van because I... Either way, I mean, the choice is clear in my mind in, in, in terms of we're coming up on Tuesday, and I, I, I really think that in terms of putting Bennett, Bennett, and Dukes on the borough assembly, you're going to do something for the future, again, safeguarding some of this insanity like Prop 2 from happening. Four, five, eight. Steve was not paid to say that. I was way. not paid to say that. I'm saying, and, and by the way, I'm also not speak. I'm, I'm speaking here as a, uh, not as a newsman, not even as the host of Problem Quarter. I'm speaking here more freely on Patriots Lament than I would speak even normally during the week. I wanted to say something real quick to follow up with James Madison, and it's something that uh, Washington said. The time is near at hand for Americans to, to, to decide whether they are to be free men or slaves. If you want to be a slave, and I take it that seriously, vote for Prop 2. If you want to be free, vote against it. Because I think I am very sincere in my beliefs that it is, it is about property rights. And property rights are one of the most valuable rights that we have. Without property rights, you have nothing else. Property rights are your thoughts, your possessions. Anything that you do that is your own is your property. And if you let one thing happen, then more will happen, and more will happen, and more will be taken away. I'm going to say it again. Madison said, I just nuked it. <laughs> Not a just government, duh. nor is property secure under it. You don't have a just government. Your property is not secure. We're a property which a man has in his personal safety and civ personal liberty is violated by arbitrary seizures of one class of citizens for the service of the rest. Speaking of arbitrary uh, seizures, I mean, just in terms of the people running again for your seat, Josh, we got a text here from somebody who pointed out that uh, John Davies, when he ran, when he was in the state government, when he was down there in Juneau, was one of those who advocated for getting rid of the permanent fund dividend. You know, the, the dividend is our property in, in the sense that it is uh, paid to us as citizens, just like any other dividend. Like if you had uh, owned stock, our money that has been invested, it gets paid out a dividend. That's ours. He voted to try to take it. And then just come, keep that in mind. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Good morning, John. Gentlemen, this is Trill. Trill, thanks for calling. What's on your mind? I got a couple of questions. Back when. Um, um, Miss Howard and, and Michael Dukes and a couple other people. Let me get out of bed. Let me get out of here. Turn the radio off. All right, off. turn off the turn off the radio. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you got the well, echo going. Way, I was a long ways away from it too. Um, it was a real tight vote, and somebody was not there that was homesick. And it seemed like to me that was Joe Blanchard, but I'm not sure. And uh, they called him up. They took a recess. They called him up, and he come in. And then they had to vote. And and whoever it was was man. I remember that. And he voted for it, which, um, which Dukes and and Miss Howard was against. <laughs> and uh, it I, got it got passed because he come in sick. But I can't. I think it was Joe Blanchard. But I wouldn't swear to that, and I'm not sure. I, one I, other I thing, think you're one right, Trail. One other thing. Um, Donna Gilbert yesterday was ranting against the Bennett brothers coming in and bringing their family and friends. Well, I happened to be down there on several occasions when they had the uh, the uh, ITA deal, and I saw a lot of people come in and fill out ballots and leave. Now, she says she don't ever remember that or had never seen that, but I've seen that numerous times. And matter of fact, I quit going because of that, because they recommended people to the to, at ITA recommended people that. Uh, well. I'd like to say something about that, Don, uh, about Donna Gilbert yesterday. I think she paid me and my brother one of the biggest compliments I've ever been paid in my life, and I do appreciate her saying that, um, in, her, in her opinion, Josh and I could run circles around just about anybody on the ins and outs of the Constitution. And our Constitution brought us the greatest nation the world has ever seen for all time, and I think she paid me one of the biggest compliments I've ever been paid in my life. We don't have anything against Miss Gilbert. Well, I Plain understand, and, and I don't have anything against Miss Gilbert. And we're sorry that she I think she does a great the... job of what she does. Yep. And uh, I think her running ITA is a great, great deal to this community. And we I support wish the they, I wish they had put a cap on. I wish that they had put a cap on uh, assessed value, so that it could not go above inflation. This uh, I talked to one lady after after I come on the radio and talked about how they jacked the property taxes up out there 179 percent, and she says, "Yeah, they." Jack her property taxes up almost five hundred percent. So, you know, yeah, I, we really need a cap on property tax assessment. 
Yes. Right, yeah, That's I, something I, to work for. I could for go for sure. that. Thanks, Jill. Appreciate the call. 458-TALK is a number. Ooh. This uh, they, they didn't hold Josh. i got to say something again. I'm just reading down from this uh, writing of Madison, what he just said about taxes. Adjust security to property. This is James Madison again. Is not afforded by that government under which unequal taxes oppress one species of property and reward another species, where arbitrary taxes invade the domestic sanctuaries of the rich and excessive taxes grind the faces of the poor, where the keenness and competition of the want are deemed insufficient spur to labor. Well, that's going to get difficult to understand after that. But basically, it comes down to is unjust government and your property is not secure where unequal taxes oppress one species of the property and reward other species, which is exactly what happens. That means you take from one group and give to your special interests. That's exactly what he's talking about. They use different words. It means the same thing. Arbitrary taxes invade the domestic sanctuaries of the rich and grind the faces of the poor, which is exactly what this man was just talking about. In the chat room, Sam points out here, uh, property tax assessments is locked in by the state law, and the Assembly cannot change that. Well, we can work to change state law too. I mean, they're well. It it all starts locally. Tammy I mean, Wilson, it, she's exactly. A you've we got you, you've got uh, a, a state representative who was a former member of the borough assembly. I, I think Tammy Wilson, who called in earlier today, by the way, too. That was the first caller, Tammy. Uh, she, I think, really has a handle on uh, some of these issues because she came up through the borough. And uh, you know, it would behoove us to really take a strong look at these candidates that are running for office. And, and not simply go in there on Tuesday and randomly pick. Because you know what? We could get some chimpanzees throwing darts. and what, get. What is that gentleman's name running for city council? Tim Hilling. Oh, oh, you, you've got Lloyd Hilling, Lloyd Hilling on, on, on one of the guy. seats. Really, yeah, he, he has He's a good a handle on it. Economics teacher. My son has had him in, uh, at university. Very good stuff. Also, um, Tim Subdy. Tim Subdy. Yep. Who's uh, running. Man. Now, he, uh, isn't he the, the guy who publishes the... Woodshed? Woodshed, yes. And that's associated with the IACC. Yes, and with um, Free Range Patriots. 458 Talk is a number almost out of time today. Good morning. Who's this? No, this is Jim. How are you doing? Good morning, Jim. There? Good. Hey, I'm interested in something. Local politics, whether we like it or not, is a two party system. And I, over the years, I've often noticed you have said, vote for the person, not for the party. And when Stevens was up for re-election, the conservative folks campaigned vote for the person, not for the party, vote for Bob Byrd. They successfully split the conservative vote, and Baggage was elected. Now, this case here with John Davies is going to get at least 3,500 votes from the progressive clique up there at the university. If the conservative vote is split, he will win. That's a really good point. That way you should really, really choose. To, uh, you should get all of your friends to come out and vote for Josh Bennett. <laughs> because No, seriously, you know, you, you, you look at it, why people start criticizing people who come in from the outside and say they're just trying to split the vote. No, what you've got is you've got a bunch of mindless zombies who do what their political party tells them to do and go and vote for the person who their party has endorsed, and we need to stop doing that. And we need to stop letting people intimidate you away from the polls and intimidate you away from the person that you wanted to vote for because you think they don't have a chance of winning. That's the same thing they do to Ron Paul supporters every year. It's the same thing that they did to Abraham Lincoln supporters. Uh, Joe Miller recently. And Joe Miller, Exactly. Uh, if, if you do not let yourself be intimidated by these people who start raising the specter, oh, you're going to split the vote. Good. Split it away from the party control and put it back in the hands of the people. Four, five, eight, talk. We are almost out of time. Good morning. Who's this? Good morning. Hey, quickly. Yeah, this is John. Okay. School board seat G, Ryan Smith. School board seat F, vote no confidence. Write it in. Thank you. Thanks for the call. We are out of time, gentlemen. Uh, action point for today, quickly. Read up on Madison. Read Study up property rights. On Madison. All this is about is property rights. See you next Talk week. Radio for the interior.